How's it going, everyone? Bob here, KD4 BMG HOA Ham with another installment of the Shack Buildout series. Today, it might seem like something pretty simple, but trust me, it will save you a ton of time if you consider and perhaps follow some of my advice if it really fits how you work in your shack. What you see behind me, which is really in front of me by the voodoo of uh, software and pictures, that's my shack, how it was configured maybe six, eight months ago. But here is how my shack is configured today. I actually just did this photograph, I should say this image, just yesterday. And so what you have here is basically what my shack is looking like today. Understand my shack is also a YouTube studio. And in my shack and YouTube studio, I'm constantly changing around my gear. Perhaps if I didn't do YouTube, I wouldn't change it quite as often. But anyone who's been an amateur operator for a period of time knows you're constantly moving gear around. How do you manage all of the cords, all of the USB cables, the power cables, the coax cables? How do you keep track of them all? That's what we'll talk about today. I have multiple coax runs on the exterior of my home in a single point utility box. I have coax that runs through a chase that I created in a garage wall. I have that coax going through the garage wall into my shack. I have all of that coax going into a distribution panel here from MFJ Enterprises. I have this rat's nest under my workstation, behind my workstation. But if you come back and you look at the front side of my shack and you just kind of look around, you can begin to see how many cables there actually are being run. I mean, right here are two coax switches that handle distribution from my single point utility box for my attic antenna farm, as well as anything I'm operating backyard portable, then over to whatever HF radio I want to run. A little bit further away is uh, just on the left side of the monitor. You see a three position, it's actually a two coax in, one out. That's my UHF VHF antennas in the attic antenna farm. You can't see it, but behind this center post, which is holding up a microphone and one of my lights, I'm running all the cables that power all the HTs that I keep on my HT wall. You will see off to the far right, my IC7300 on top of the IC7300. I've got my scanner on top of my scanner. I have my SWR meter. Then I have my Anytone 578. I've got cables coming from monitors, power cords from monitors, three monitors, a microphone in front of me, a selfie cam in front of me that you can't see, an overhead cam you can't see, and an over the shoulder cam you can't see. There are cables and wires everywhere. And then this is what the back of my PC looks like. Look at all of those ports that are available to me. And then look at my label wall. Look at these Zach Tech Whisper transmitters, each one of them having a power cable, an antenna cable, and a USB micro mini, I forget which, that goes over to my power block and then goes back down to my computer. Oh my gosh, it just goes on and on and on. How do you keep track of this stuff? Let's do the easy part real quick on the zip ties because I want to take you to the more difficult of how to take the rat's nest from this to this. I'll leave links in the description below where you can pick up these items as I always do in my videos. And all I'm doing is taking a single cable and putting the same color zip tie on both ends. And that way, when I run a, say a 10 foot long cable or a 50 foot run of coax, I have two ends that are marked exactly the same. So anytime I come into the shack, I know what I'm dealing with. And then there are also these that have kind of a, a little pad that you can write on with a marker or some of these come with little white labels that you can put on top of the colored pads and you can actually write something there. And these are the bits that we'll use to talk about the uh, cable organization underneath my shack workstation. So how exactly do I use these color zip ties on my cables? Let's start in the shack and work out to an antenna. So this switch right here, that goes to various radios. So one of these cables is going to my IC7300 and the others are available to use either with an antenna analyzer or a QRP radio that I frequently put on the workbench and have fun with. Right here, this coax switch chooses my antennas. So I can choose what antenna, what HF antenna I'm using, either an attic 
uh, farm antenna or a backyard portable antenna, and then which transceiver that I want to deploy that antenna with. So you can see that I have various colors on these antenna cable coax feeds coming into the switch. Where do they go to next? Well, next they go right here to my MFJ distribution box. And from here, they go out to the cable in uh, that's running through my chase in the garage, which terminates at my single point utility box here on the outside wall of my house. And if you followed closely as I went from photo to photo to photo, you can see there are colored zip ties on every cable. So when I've got an antenna deployed backyard portable that's coming out of my single point utility box, guess what? As soon as I look at the coax on the single point utility box, I know which antenna it is here on my switch. And so I can easily, from my shack, know how to operate this antenna switch right here so that I can quickly change from an attic farm antenna or backyard portable antenna. Then just do this with everything else that's in your shack. Do it on the USB cables that run from your computer to some other device in your shack, wherever you deploy cables. Use color coding on the cable itself so you can always identify it because our workbenches are pushed up against the wall. My computer is in a cabinet down in the corner, closed off, pushed up against the wall. I have to crawl back there and squeeze in a little tiny nook and cranny to see what's going on back there where the cables run into my computer. I don't need to do that because I can look up at my camera, my monitors, my 578 and I know what cable is going where because I've got a colored zip tie on it. When you run out of colors because there would be more cables run than there are color options, then start putting multiple colored cables on um, the same cable. There I said cable twice. Put multiple colored zip ties on the same cable. See this one right here? The in out on that antenna switch has three colors on it, lime green, purple, and orange. That's going to my LDG tuner. Use these zip ties to your advantage so you don't have to crawl in spaces to find out what you ran or guess when you've got an antenna switch and you don't know what antenna it's going to. So now let's talk about this rat's nest of cords and cables that's running under the workstation. So I have everything color coded on both ends of the cable, I know where they're going. I wish I knew how many cables I actually have running in the shack. I don't know, 50, 60, 70 cables. So having these things color-coded is really helpful. But how do you organize them? Well, I use a lot of um, either Velcro or command strip double-sided tape. And I use command strip for a very specific reason. This has no Velcro on it, but it's um, it's sticky on both sides. It has adhesive on both sides. This says wall side. So you take one of these command strips and you peel off the wall side piece of backing and you put it on one of these clips. And now what I have is basically a cable clip that when I take this side of the adhesive off and I stick it to the wall, I have some place that I can run cables and have them stay in place. And that's part of what my solution is of all the mess that runs underneath my shack and behind my computer. The other thing is, what do you do when you have power supplies? Um, kind of like um, my power supplies for my monitors. They're brick power supplies. This command strip here I use for two reasons. It is Velcro on one side and pressure sensitive on the other side. So when you take this and you put two pieces of this Velcro together, take one side and put it on your brick, take the other side and put it on the wall or whatever surface you're trying to mount it to. Say you're trying to mount it to your workstation. Why do I use these? Well, command strip is known to be able to be removable. So not only can I take my power strip, my power brick, or whatever piece of equipment that I'm uh, installing, I can remove it, 
but if I choose to reconfigure sometime down the road, which I mentioned I'm always doing and how many of us aren't always reconfiguring, this stuff will peel off of the wall. There is a very specific way that you remove command strip. Now, let's see if I can demonstrate it just a little bit here. And so if I was uh, pulling this away from the wall, I have to first kind of take the adhesive strip off the back, the protective strip. Now that's adhesive. Well, let's, let's do it this way. So right here, I'm putting it on my workbench, right? It is on my workbench. And let's say that I had this attached to a power brick. There you go. Now my power brick would be sitting right here. Let's say, well, good grief. Let's stop pretending and let's actually give you a real demonstration. So this is a remote control for something I can't wait to show you soon. Now my remote control is attached. It's on my workstation. So if I put a power brick on a wall, it's out of the way, I can organize it. And then I can take some of these strips and kind of guide the wire. So let's say that I decide I wanna move this. Well, you just undo the Velcro. And by the way, this command strip Velcro is very strong. You've seen me in some of my other videos actually attach radios, small radios to other pieces of equipment. I'll do a video on that someday. But you can take this command strip and peel it, you stretch it, and it disengages from the strip of Velcro, and it will come off of the wall. And so you can you do use this on surfaces that are painted, and if you remove this slow enough, you will not damage the paint on the wall. And this is why I use command strip Velcro to do a lot of the attachment in my shack. And that is exactly how I went from this rat's nest to this with one addition. Some of you might have spotted a wood ledge underneath my workstation. And that is exactly what it is. It's about a two inch wide wooden ledge that I cut specific to the size that would fit underneath my workstation and allow me to lay on top of it two power strips because I have several power cord needs. I wanted to wrap them up neatly. And oh, by the way, wrap power cords very loosely. Do not wrap power cords tight. That creates heat and heat and electricity are a problem. So wrap any power cords loosely. But I took this piece of wood, made sure that it was level across the back wall I screwed it into studs. I know exactly where the studs are. I use the stud finder to find them. They're almost always going to be right next to electrical boxes. And since I worked with the electricians to install those boxes, I knew where the studs were. And now I have a ledge to hang my power strips. And now that I can organize my power strips here very neatly, that allowed me to use the other accessories. It allowed me to use um, the clear clips to guide cables. It allowed me to use my command strip and uh, the Velcro and get these power bricks up on the wall. And that's how everything looks nice and tidy underneath my workstation. This is how I organize my shack. I'm always changing out gear and equipment. I do that more than many because I'm also doing YouTube. So I'm changing out uh, audio visual gear quite frequently, but I just like playing with different radios. I have changed out so many radios and uh, SDRs and so many other pieces of equipment. And I always have a leg up because I use my colored zip ties and then I organize my cables. So I'm not the smart one in the room. I'm not the engineer. I don't know how to design a radio. I don't know what resistors, diodes, and IC chips to put together to make RF work. I'm mesmerized by RF. I love um, experimenting with it and using it. But I'm a mechanically inclined pragmatist, and this is how I organize my shack. I hope you found this useful, friend. I'll talk to you soon. 73.